are we getting remakes of Pokemon Gold and Silver? Or really, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, to be specific, since technically those games were brought back one time already. Uh, we have something interesting to discuss in regards to that and what Nintendo might be doing and why. Or really, the Pokemon Company? I don't know. It's hard to tell them apart when it comes to the actual mainline Pokemon games. That being said, before I get into that, we have a couple giveaways going on right now. One is for an Xbox Series X, a PlayStation 5, or a Nintendo Switch. It is our 50,000 subscriber celebration. Thank you so much for getting us to that milestone. Uh, to enter, go down into the description. And we also have an October giveaway uh, that is going on as well for two copies of Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Again, you want to win one of those copies, go down into the description. And uh, good freaking luck. Oh, and by the way, let's get this video to 1,000 likes. If you don't like this video... I will kick your dog. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. Um, in Japan, Nintendo has filed some new trademarks. The trademarks published today, uh, but they were actually filed at the very beginning of the month. Trademarks you know, usually take a while uh, to go through. They were filed on September 7th. So what, what it is is Nintendo has uh, filed for trademarks for Soul Silver and Heart Gold. Now, some of their trademarks for... Uh, prior Pokemon games are currently expired. Uh, Nintendo doesn't renew them very often. Uh, they don't have to renew them very often unless they're planning to repackage and resell. So what's interesting about refiling this trademark is it covers 50 products and services, um, including merchandise and stuff like that, but also includes video game programs. Uh, so what's interesting about that is the potential that the Pokemon company and Nintendo are actually working on well, a Soul Silver slash Heart Gold remake of sorts. Now, uh, this would not be super surprising. Obviously, Pokemon Sword and Shield is one of the most popular Pokemon games ever made, like in the history of the franchise. And Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, Eevee did an easy 10, 11 million in sales. And uh, having another Let's Go game go to the Silver and Gold, which is Gen 2, would not be all that surprising. It almost feels like a natural progression. Now, they did act like Let's Go uh, Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu would be one-offs. But, I mean, they sold decently well. Over 10 million copies. There, there's not a reason to think they couldn't revisit that again. And next year might be a great year for that because they went with a new generation in Sword and Shield. They went with DLC this year. They could go Let's Go, uh, you know, with, with the Soul Silver and Heart Gold games next year. And then the year after could be another new gem, whatever follows up Pokemon, um, you know, Pokemon Sword and Shield. So I, I think this is extremely interesting to, to know because, you know, without a Pokemon game this year, clearly there's going to be a Pokemon game next year. They, they kind of broke the streak this year. They had had a new Pokemon game come out every year for like eight straight years. They broke the streak this year with DLC, but you know they're developing something behind the scenes. They're not just making DLC, right? They have another game in the works to come likely next year. So uh, this would make a ton of sense. So you think about it logically. You think about the fact there wasn't a game this year. You think about the success of, of Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. You think about you know the success of, obviously, Sword and Shield. There's going to be more Pokemon games coming to Switch. I, I predict at least three more Pokemon games coming to Switch before this Switch moves on to the next-gen Switch. And even then, the Pokemon company likes to hold on to old platforms. Could you so you could see a fourth um, next year having a Pokemon game is obviously uh, ideal for Nintendo. Yes, it's the 35th anniversary of Zelda. Yes, it's the 35th anniversary of Metroid. And yes, I think we're gonna get Breath of the Wild too. But here's the thing: I think we're gonna get Breath of the Wild too early in the year, like first six months, sometime before E3. And I think the Pokemon game is going to be the holiday game. That's just my general thoughts on this because Pokemon games can launch at any time, by the way. You know, they've, they've launched Pokemon games outside the holiday. But I feel like having uh, Breath of the Wild 2 come out early in the year is something that really favors Nintendo's momentum because that, that game is, you know, just like the first one, is, is an evergreen title. Uh, almost more evergreen than Pokemon is at this point. So I do think that Pokemon would benefit more from a holiday push, whereas uh, Breath of the Wild is going to crush it no matter what. Like, yeah, Pokemon is going to sell big numbers at any point, but it's, it will sell even bigger numbers during the holiday. I think, you know, w with what we're seeing with Breath of the Wild still in the top 10 every single week, every single month, that clearly they can just release that game at any time and people are going to keep buying it. So I, I do think that Breath of the Wild 2 uh, should come out early in the year then have this Pokemon game come out later. Now, as for am I excited for these games? Well, I have not played Sword and Shield. I know. 
it's almost blasphemy for, for to say that because I did tell people, I mean, a lot of you new folks might not know this, but I told people back in the day, you know, a couple of years ago that I would play the new generation of Pokemon games because I hadn't played a Pokemon game uh, in like 15 years. Uh, I just, I felt, you know, I was a big person during Gen 1. I enjoyed Gold and Silver, and then I kind of fell off with the franchise. I felt like they made things more complicated than they needed to be. And I realized for a casual player, you can ignore a lot of these complexities, but I liked playing competitively against others um, without having to worry about all of uh, all of the massive complications. So I just I ended up kind of falling out of love with the series. Uh, but I've always respected the Pokemon franchise and I've wanted to get back into it. Uh, but just every time I, I, I dipped my toes, I ended up not really liking what I was playing. Now, uh, Sword and Shield is a game that I do plan to play. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what opinions I'm going to have on it. Or maybe I should wait. I, I'm, I don't know. You guys let me know. Some people think it's a game I should skip. That's not a good one to try to get back into the franchise with. Uh, but I, d I did play Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Obviously, I played those games because Gen 1 is my favorite generation of Pokemon. So, you know, we're talking red, blue, uh, green in some territories, and obviously yellow. Yellow is my, my favorite of, of the bunch. It's like a culmination of all of it. Pikachu follows you, whatever. So, uh, and this one seemed to follow more after that one. Just because you can have Pokemon following you. And I think that um, I really enjoyed Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. I know some people think, oh, easy cash grab, didn't like the motion controls. didn't like what. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fantastic. Pokemon in the overworld was just mind-blowing to me. And I realized that, you know, this continued into Sword and Shield, so it's not considered a new feature anymore. But I still really enjoyed that Pokemon in the overworld thing. I didn't mind the motion controls. I didn't mind ha it, that it didn't add in updated mechanics. I know some people were upset with the game because other, you know, quote-unquote, quote remakes added in updated mechanics from more, from more current games they didn't they, they kept this really strict to just this is how it was back in the day this is how it's going to be now and that's what i loved about it because they didn't mess with what i loved so uh that's just me though of course so i played that and i would probably buy this because i did enjoy gold and silver and yes i did play heart gold and soul silver and wasn't necessarily a fan of the new mechanics they added back in. But you know what? With this trademark, if they're going to do it, they're clearly going to follow after Heart Gold and Soul Silver, uh, and and probably have some of those newer mechanics in it. If it's a Let's Go type of game, it doesn't mean it will be a Let's Go type of game. It could be more like a Sword and Shield type of game. You know, we don't know that the Let's Go style is going to continue, especially when you see the success of Sword and Shield. They could definitely go more in that direction because obviously it sold almost twice the amount of games. But uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. Obviously, we also have to wait and see how the DLC, the final DLC, performs, which the Frozen Tundra, I believe, it should be coming soon. That, that DLC should be coming soon. It's, it's supposed to be here before the end of the year. So uh, maybe it's not coming until November or December, but it, it, it'll be here. Uh, I don't know. You guys are going to have to let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. Do you think them renewing this trademark when they don't always renew Pokemon trademarks means something? Or is it just a bunch of nothing and Nintendo just doing some maintenance? Obviously, time will tell. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rumble Jets from Nintendo Prime. Be sure to enter those giveaways. And I'll catch you in the next one.